We are members of a church that has lasted for over 2,000 years because of the zeal, conviction, and love that many holy men and women had for Christ and his church. You give the light in one of the front lights. Here in Singapore, since Saint Laurent Ambert came 200 years ago, many religious, lay missionaries, and priests have followed and laid down their lives in the hope of building up the church so that all of us know of the salvation that our Lord has brought us. We have benefited much from the total sacrifice from the setting of schools, hospital, hospices, and homeless shelters to attending to the spiritual needs of the faithful in Singapore. It is now our duty to build on the efforts and ensure that future generations will always have the light of faith to guide them. Each of us has been given gifts of time, talents, and treasures, not to be used for ourselves, but to be used for this mission. To develop our young men and women through a holistic education. To inspire leaders who will in turn inspire others. To nurture our children into faithful disciples of Jesus. To form and strengthen the faith of Catholics to be better witnesses of the Lord. To echo our faith to those who are searching for Him. To inspire believers to live our faith courageously and learn. And to raise up generations of young people for Christ. To support our clergy who have dedicated their lives to minister to us. To contribute to digitization efforts to grow our faith community. To build and maintain places for us to worship him and be molded in his likeness, including the huge of Catholic Hub. Just like these saints who in their own ways touched the lives of the faithful in Singapore, we too have the capacity to be confident of God's grace and to meet the needs of our church. Let us support the work of the Archdiocese to ensure that the light of the gospel will continue to reach the hearts of men, to widen and deepen the reach of evangelization, so that we can be a more vibrant, evangelizing, and missionary church. Guided by the light that we have received in baptism, let us be grateful for the gift of our faith these 200 years. Continue to ignite and shine with faith. And as one body of Christ, build the church today for tomorrow. Hi, everyone. Ah, okay. So welcome to this talk. Uh, this is Lawrence. My name is Paul. Uh, so we hope that you can uh, bring something out of this positive uh, 45 minutes. Think of the questions you want to ask, and we'll have a short Q&A at the end. But I'll just hand off over to Lawrence, uh, who will kick us off. Thank you so much for being here this afternoon. Today we are here to, to talk about debt. But before we begin, this is the agenda we'll follow today. We'll do a quick introduction. We'd like to also engage you in this and not make it a, a one-way one -way communication. We'll, we'll speak about, after the introduction, we'll speak about ex expenditure, what we understand our drivers of expenditure, and then what, um, what, what should guide us, and how do we look at expenditure. And of course, expenditure then leads us potentially into debt. We would like to talk about um, how expensive debt can be and potentially how do we minimize and eliminate. So maybe we'll go straight into our introductions now. Um, so my name is Lawrence, Lawrence Chan. I'm from the Church of St. Ignatius. Um, my wife and I, we serve there in the catechism ministry. I'm also a Eucharistic minister. Um, my day job, I'm the, I'm the group CEO of NETS, yeah. so I actually encourage people to spend. 
<laughs> so I think I can talk about expenditure, <clears throat> and Paul can talk about that. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's who I am, and very, very happy to be here and to, to share with you this afternoon. Yeah, so for me, I'm, uh, my wife and I are involved in the praise and worship in OLPS. Uh, basically, we attended CER, then thereafter, we, we started serving in the music ministry. Uh, my day job is I'm VP of FinTech within Property Guru. It's strange, right? But we are handling this Property Guru Finance, which is a new mortgage-related business. But we've, I've worked with people over the years with regard to debt and, and loans and stuff uh, because I, I used to be in a bank. So ho hopefully we can share some insights along the way as we talk about this. So I'm just curious. So let's, let's, let's shout out the answers and don't, don't be shy, okay? Can you, every time you hear the word debt, huh, do you feel good or bad? And what are your thoughts about debt? So, sorry? Trouble, Trouble. Trouble, problems, yeah. A lot of people find that debt is troublesome, right? What else? Obligations, that's a strong word, right? But it's true. A lot of people say, ah, oh, I have to have this job so that I can pay off my, my obligations, right? Eh? What else is there? Feeling trapped. Feeling trapped. Ah, that, that's very inside your heart, huh? You feel it that way. Any other feelings about this? Say again. Liabilities. Liabilities. Ah, so generally the feeling we get about debt is that it is trapping us, it's limiting our freedom, right? So that's part of the reason why we are talking about this here. Uh, of course, in 45 minutes, we can't cover everything. Okay? We are going to give you some pointers and some things generally to talk about. Then we move on. But recognize that 45 minutes, we can't give you very much. We'll give you some, uh, some insights and some tools, some strategies to move on. Is that okay? All right? So over to you, Lawrence. So before we go into debt itself, what leads to debt is, as we mentioned, it's expenditure. Right, when we spend, or, and probably when we, <clears throat> when we spend too much, we can go into debt. Or we're sp making purchases that, are, that require us to borrow money. So maybe let's start first with what's, what are the drivers for expenditure? We would like to suggest, we'd like to suggest that because we are Catholics, we, need, we understand that we have this very special calling that you and I are children of God. God sent His Son into the world. He went through His passion, His death, His resurrection, not just to, not just to take away our sins, which is, of course is so important, but it's also so that we can live now as it is in heaven as his children. And we have this from our Father, the, our, the prayer our Father, right? Our Father, what in heaven, may your name be held holy, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, on earth here as well. How can we live as children of God? And our, what we spend on, how we spend, we really like to suggest it should be an understanding of our relationship with God, because we are his children. How are we living as his children through our expenditure? And of course, <clears throat> because we are his children of God, then what is our mission? Why are we here? Why are you and I here? We are here on this earth to fulfill. And here we are, we are pulling out one aspect. Of course, there are many aspects. One of the main aspects we are pulling out is the understanding of common good. to bear fruit here on earth as it is in heaven. We are called to do good. We are called to, to, to do good in the way we spend, in the way we save, the way we invest. In CCC 2404, in his use of things, man sh should regard the external goods he legitimately owns, not merely as exclusive to himself, but common to others also, in the sense that they can be benefit of others, first of all, his family. In, in the things we spend, that we choose to, to spend on, in the things that we choose to put our, our money against, in the, our time against, our talents against, how are we building this common good? So we'd like to suggest that this should be our starting point. 
when we really understand debt. For some of us who are already in debt, maybe we can be flagged back on this starting point. For all, some of us who are going into expenditure, which may require loans, what's, what's our motivation? Because I come from the payments business, we use this very commonly on a day-to-day -day basis. Payments can be put into two buckets, discretionary and non-discretionary. Right? So when you charge to your nets, so you charge to your card, your Visa, MasterCard, what, is, what, what can you charge with discretionary? What do, you what do we define as discretionary? What do we define as non-discretionary? In our payments business, that's important because normally for non-discretionary, we try to increase that spend because even come the economic cycles of high and low, there'll be a minimum spend, therefore minimum amount of business that we make. So that's non-discretionary spend used in our business. But in our personal lives, it's, it's the same thing. Our non-discretionary spend would be our things that we need, or another way of calling it would be essentials. What are our essentials that we have to purchase, right? We have to buy our toothbrush, our toothpaste, our soap, but even within, within, um, within discretionary spend, or non, sorry, within non-discretionary spend, whether you're buying a soap, you can buy something which is more expensive than another. Liquid soap versus a bar soap in that sense. So even that, we can, when we make a decision, we can try to be conscious about how we are spending on non-discretionary spend. And of course, for discretionary spend, Discretionary spend is not bad. Discretionary spend is we, can, we have the discretion whether we want to spend it or not. Rightly or wrongly, next week, me and my family are going on a holiday. Please pray for us. <laughs> but that's discretionary spend. Right? We, we have that discretion whether we want to spend for that item. So for discretionary spend, most of the time, discretionary spend would lead to us wanting to Maybe if we can't afford it for now, then how do we take a, a loan to support a discretionary spend? I'd like to bring in a bit of the concept of consumerism. Right? Um, Pope Francis has explained in the purple box, if I can read out, indifferent individualism leads to a cult of opulence reflected in the throwaway culture all around us. We have a surfeit of unnecessary things, but we no longer have the capacity to build authentic human relationships marked by truth and mutual respect. Today, one of the key acronyms in the business world, I'm sure all of you are aware, is ESG. Recently, when 111 was over, right, 111, a lot of spend in China also saw a decline compared to previous years. I think there's also much more consciousness now in terms of the purchases that people are making. What's the impact on the environment? What's the impact on social and sustainability and potential governance of all these? And it's also very similar to what was shared by Pope Francis in Laudato Si. In terms of how we are responsible, we are, we are responsible for what's around us. And there's this very tempting understanding that the more you spend, especially in the US, uh, in, in large economies rather, in large economies where the more the consumer spends, you can drive the economy out of recession. So spending is good. But then how do we balance it with what we talked about earlier in terms of who am I, my identity, and what is my, my mission? So then we go into this topic of debt. Is it good or bad? I think from the words <laughs> written on the whiteboard, doesn't sound very good. <laughs> I wouldn't go to the extent of good, but I would maybe introduce the word necessary. When is debt necessary? And when is debt really bad? Shouldn't touch it. Should don't, go to, don't go near it at all. And then, of course, today we will talk a little bit about if if you are, you're, you know people who are there, then how do, you, how do we walk with them and how do we guide them to, the, to professional help or guide them to the right, the right decisions? 
I think before I hand over to Paul, the one very important concept that I think we should all be aware of, and that's greed. Whether it's discretionary spend or non-discretionary spend, is how do we be careful that of what is written here in the, in the purple box on greed. Now, I won't read this, if you can just read that by yourself and maybe listen to what I'm saying. We really have to be very careful that greed doesn't become the, our motivation. If you, any of you saw, and this will say my age, but if any of you saw Wall Street, Michael Douglas, Right? Wall Street is driven by two concepts, greed and fear. <laughs> greed can really get us into a place where we really do not want to be. And how do we make sure, how do we, how do we ensure that our relationship with God, knowing that we are His child, the mission that we have here, and where greed doesn't have a place for us. With this, I'll hand over to, to Paul. So today, we, I mean, what I've just done is really just try to give a high-level understanding of what should be our drivers for expenditure, what types of expenditure are there, and how should we really be careful with the concept of greed. Okay, so uh, let's talk about that, huh? Normally, when we talk about debt, what are we talking about? Credit cards, right? Right? So, you know, uh, if you use credit cards correctly, uh, you charge and you, you pay off the same month or next month, it's free generally. Uh. Some places you go, they say we add on a credit card surcharge 3%. Actually, by right, you're not supposed to do that. Uh. So, if you apply to the, the, the principal and you pay off every month, no additional charges. So, that's the correct way to use it. So, a lot, of time, uh, a lot of times, we don't know how the numbers add up. Most people have never calculated what the numbers do, how it means to you, how much are you paying. Nobody sees. So let's run through some numbers, okay? You'll be quite surprised, okay? So let's look at this, huh? Let's say this one, $60,000 outstanding. We are looking at three different scenarios where people all owe $60,000, okay? Now, the first one, uh, this person pays minimum sum. Now, generally, minimum sum means you pay 3% of your outstanding loan, or outstanding balance, or $50, whichever is higher. So you will see that, right? Sometimes you, you charge $40, and then you pay off in full, right? Because it's below the minimum of 50 Okay, so starting point is 60000 right? If you're paying minimum sum, you have 47,100 left after two years. Not so bad, right? Not so bad, huh? Let's look at this further. Now, assuming you continue paying, right? How much do you think you need to pay uh, principal and interest in order to pay it off? Can somebody guess? Just two, two, two examples or two guesses in total? Huh? No, 50,000, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's compounding. Means interest or interest. Just guess lah. It's okay, don't worry. Huh? 70, is it? 70K. Anyone else? Huh? All shy, man. 100,000. 100,000. Let me show you. 189,700. If you pay minimum sum every month, shocking, right? I saw your look, your eyes very big. Okay. <laughs> minimum. Say again. If you take the 189,700, yeah, next, next, next line, next line. Ah, ah. So, so you see, lah, huh? <laughs> Very short, only one lifetime. 37 years, right? All right? Or half a lifetime, lah. Okay? Now, this is, you want to take photo, take at the end, because it's got a lot. Okay? So, 37 years, is that shocking to you? If you know, uh, you go and spend money to buy a phone, uh, and you have to charge it and pay minimum interest, uh, minimum uh, uh, payment, would you go and buy it? It's infinitely more expensive. Right? It's scary, right? Okay, let's look at the next example. You pay minimum sum every month, extra $200. Right? 
Okay, based on this example, for the 2,800, because you add $200, right? Every month you pay. Okay, somebody guess for me, how much is your total amount you pay? This minimum sum plus $200. Guess, guess. 120. 140. 150. 127. <laughs> but still, huh? significant, no? Very significant. Right? From 60, you essentially doubling how much you have to pay. Like ignoring time value of money. Huh? 12 years. So every month you pay additional 200. For the 12 years, you'll be suffering all. It's true, right? But we, we are so accustomed to it, right? They say, oh, never mind, let's let it roll off. It's okay, well, our bank... Now, one of the biggest things that clients say uh, when they do this is, it's okay, banks, just pay interest. Actually, you pay a lot, 12 years. Now, last one, huh? You pay minimum sum, right? Every month, you spend $200. Okay? $51,200. Why? Because you're adding on, right? Ah, <laughs> how much do you think you pay? <laughs> 250. 250 uh. Hey, don't whack me if I show you the answer, okay? It's more than 189,000. It's more than this figure. Why do I present it this way? Right? Very simply this. How long do you think, if this is 37 years, this is 12 years, how long do you think you will take to pay off this debt? Huh? 50 years? Any more? Don't be shy. There's no wrong answer. Huh? Okay, this is the answer. You're ready, eh? <laughs> you will never be able to pay off the debt. Because the debt is ahead of you. Okay, I'll give you a few minutes. Let's take this photo. When you look at your spending on your credit card or your, your, your debt, think about this principle. Right? Truthfully, how many people have never worked out what your credit card payments are? Never worked out like how much interest you pay and things like that. Who has never? Well, I'm the only one. <laughs> okay? A lot of people, a lot of the clients we work with, uh, I used to work in a branch. And some people would come in and say, I can't afford to pay. Right? Now, what happens is this scenario will never be repaid. A lot of times, it, the estate handles it. The banks will claim against the estate, and sometimes, no choice, the, the banks will write off. But think about it, how much money they've made from the persons already, right? Okay, so this is something that's very eye-opening. If, if I can add, Paul, yeah. you don't mind. So for the last scenario of never paid, we'll never, you'll never be able to pay, right? So if I have a, an outstanding amount, 60000 I spend that two hundred dollars incremental to my sixty thousand every month. I spend every charge that I make to that card attracts interest. Mm. If you don't, if you pay on time, which is the model behavior, all of us should pay on time. Then there's no interest charge. But the moment there is one dollar that is not paid in full, every subsequent transaction attracts interest until it is paid in full. That's why in bowl will never be yeah, paid. You, you understand what, that, what Lawrence is saying, right? Normally, there's an interest-free period where you charge credit card, right? Remember, I told you, if you pay off in full, next month you get, you pay off, it's no interest. If you carry balances, the moment you do, do that, you get, you incur the 24%, I think higher now, 25 or, 24. Yeah, on interest on your, <laughs> for every $1 you spend, you're paying $25 interest per annum. It's scary, yeah? but this is the reality. Now, a lot of people don't know this. Huh? And that's a good point that Lawrence raised, right? right? So how do we do it? Sometimes, you know, Lawrence talks about discretionary, non-discretionary. There are a lot of people now, no choice. They have to use the card to, to live their lives because they simply are not making enough money or their expenses are too high. That is how they manage. That's the reality. Okay, so like, you know how Jesus, when he, he casts out evil spirits, right? he will ask for the name of the spirit, right? So same thing, we have to understand the nature of what we are doing, right? Our finances. So first thing you need to do is to 
uh, track your, 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 actually I jump one slide, uh, but you're supposed to track your, your, what you spend every day. Uh? And then how do, you, how do you eliminate that? Okay, first thing to do uh, is to increase your income. A bit stupid, uh, but this <laughs> is, right? Need to find work or side income that will allow you to have a higher balance. Now, the challenge is this. A lot of people, when they up their income, they also up their lifestyles. That's the reality, right? People buy bigger cars, bigger houses, right? So first thing to do is to increase your income. Second thing uh, is to track your expenses. Now, remember I told you about naming your, the, the, the spirit, right? The evil spirit. A lot of people spend $20, $30 a day on their lattes or flat whites. Not that you cannot spend. You can. If you have the money, by all means. But a lot of people in debt do that. So first thing to do is to track all your expenses for one month or even up to three months. Right? I always like to use an example. Uh, if I want to lose weight, uh, I will track what I eat for a month to three months. Right? Obviously, I haven't been tracking a lot. Uh, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's the reality. Right? After what you say, hey, actually, uh, I'm spending uh, $30 a day uh, on my coffees outside. Then maybe it's something to do. And if you're charging it to your card, and you're rolling the balances, you're not spending $30, you're spending a lot more, right? Does it make sense, right? Next thing is, after you do all your tracking, the, when you're tracking, don't review, right? Don't review. Only after you track, then you review. Then you say, okay, let's sum it up. And what do you do? You use things like Excel or, that, or some apps. But Excel is free. La. So you just calculate. You say, okay, this one, I spent X dollars doing what? Why dollars doing what? Because I stress, uh, I smoke, right? <laughs> things like that, right? A lot of people do things and then you say, maybe it's time for me then to evaluate and say, what if I cut my coffee to once a day, $5 I spend? You save a lot of money, right? So these things, right? All these steps, you will then break, break it up to essential and non-essential expenditure, right? Just now what Lawrence was talking about, discretionary, non-discretionary. These steps I'm talking are, are very simple, huh? but not easy to do. I guarantee you some people will start within three days, forget already. <laughs> but that's reality. You want to manage your money, this is the way to do it. Okay, does it make sense? So track, track first, then you do measure, then you, you look at it and say, what is essential, what is discretionary, right? Then you create spending plan. Okay, that's called a budget, lah. okay? Now, there are a lot of ways to do it, doing this. We're not going to go into a lot of detail here. For me, I used to try and save at the end of the month. Never worked for me. Because a lot of people say, hey, uh, I, I, I save 10%. Uh, but then I tricked myself. Uh. Subsequently, I developed strategies to save money. Right? All these things, we will talk about them you know, when, 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 when there's an uh, opportunity. Okay? Then you list down all your debt, okay? Now, now in Singapore, it's better already. Singapore, there's some regulation, some uh, law that says, that caps how much money you can borrow from the banks. That, a lot of people complained last time, but it actually is to help us, right? That's why during this uh, COVID situation, a lot of people, better situation than if last time, you know, you can do five, 10 times per bank. Now they cap it across all banks, okay? So it, it protects us uh, for ourselves. And then create a debt snowball plan. I'll teach you how to do this. Simple but not easy. Uh. Okay? So take a couple of seconds. Uh. Okay, now is a good time to start thinking of questions that you want to ask us. Okay? This is a good time to be thinking about that. So if you look at this, right? Um, you list down. Uh, okay, I tell you a story first before you do all these things. Uh. Okay, don't, don't look that low at me. Huh? Okay, about 20 over years ago, I was in banking. And if you look at about 20 years ago, what, that was a tech crash. If you remember the tech crash. So I was working in a bank selling investments. Right? Low basic, higher comp. But what happened was that the tech crash came and, and it affected me, right? And then at that point in time, my wife was working and we had a lifestyle, right? Then my wife said, uh, baby came, my wife said, I want to stay at home. 
So as a parent, as a husband and a father, I said, okay lah. But we had had a certain kind of lifestyle. So what did I do? My, my income dropped because I wasn't selling as many investments, right? So I borrowed, right? And my debt snowballed uh, to about 50, 60,000, right? Then, thank goodness, there, were, there was a few ways out. I told my wife in the end. I actually kept it from her, right? But I used this strategy to get out of it. So that's why I can tell you from experience, these things are simple, but not easy, right? It takes a lot of discipline, and you have to understand your own personality, okay? So I'm sharing with you from that angle. It's not theory, uh, okay? So you list down right, all the debt you have, okay? There are two ways of listing, very simple. You list down everything, then you, you sort, use Excel, uh, you sort highest interest rate to lowest interest rate. That is one way, right? The other way uh, is you sort by lowest balance to highest balance, okay? So uh, can I ask you, uh, why in the world do you want to do that? Why do you want to look at it from highest interest to lowest interest or smallest balance to highest balance? Can, can somebody share? What, what do you think? If you have a higher interest rate, yeah. then you can find another means of borrowing at a lower interest Yeah, so that's one way, right? If you are blessed to be living in a house that you can take equity out of, meaning you take uh, some value out of the house to pay off, that's low interest, right? You pay off the higher interest. That's one way. Very good point. What, what other reasons are you doing that? Why do you want to do this? If you pay normally, you pay higher interest rate first, right? but some people pay smaller balance first. Why do you do that? <laughs> it's like, balance can be psychological. Wow, this guy is a smart guy. It's true. Sorry, I'm university lecturer. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of university lecturers who are not so smart. <laughs> so it, it, it is psychological. So it depends on yourself. If you are somebody who is very disciplined, then pay from highest to lowest. You can look at refinancing. No wonder all these things you can look at, right? You can pull out balances to pay, pay off your higher loans. It's called debt consolidation, right? But if, let's say, you live in a HDB, HDB doesn't allow you to take equity out of the house, for example. So then you have to ask yourself, what kind of a person? Do I need motivation? Okay? Now, uh, if you can take the QR code there, that's an example of a snow, snowball uh, spreadsheet. Okay? Play with it. So I'll give you an example. Huh? Let's say now I list out my debt. Right? I got 10 debt. And I have to spend $3,000 to pay the minimum sum for everything, right? If I make $5,000 a, a, a month, $3,000 of payment is, you know that you, you will come to a stage where your expenses will be higher than how much money you make, right? So let's say $3,000, I do that. And let's say I'm the one with the lack of mental strength. Lah. So I go and go with the lower balance to the highest balance. The lowest balance means uh, when I pay off, uh, I pay off the loan sooner or later. The small balance, sooner or later. Sooner, right? So let's say I spend $200 uh, a month uh, normally paying this, this small balance one. When I finish paying off that $200, I still pay, continue, uh, I still continue to pay $3,000. Then what do I do? I do the minimum plus $200 for the next highest, next higher balance. You understand what I'm saying? Right? Then I pay extra $200 into debt. I still continue to pay $3,000. Then if that debt or when the debt gets eliminated, I take the sum, I pay for the next one. It becomes faster and faster. That is why it's called a snowball. It becomes faster and faster. It gains momentum, it gives you confidence. Now, what I used to do was, I didn't do like that. Huh? I had a summary sheet like that. Then each debt has a separate page. And when I pay off, I, I cross it up. Right? The balance I carry. This is something that is very, very important to do because psychologically, it reinforces your strength, mental strength to do it. Right? Of course, with prayer, with what Lawrence shared also about us, huh? because as humans, we have human dignity. If not managed correctly, and that is not bad huh, all the time. 
But if we don't uh, manage this properly, that can take away our, our, our dignity. You understand? Doing these things will help us restore our human dignity. Right? You'll feel confident and proud that you are able to control your debt. Does it make sense? Okay? So this is something that's very, very powerful. This is the takeaway uh, that, that, that we would like you to take. Okay? Sorry, I'm very long-winded, right? But this is very powerful. Now, do you have any cute questions that you want to ask? Or Don't be shy, uh, this, uh, because the cameras are not on you. Uh, <laughs> nobody can see you. <laughs> they are on him, the handsome guy. <laughs> So, do you have any questions that you want to ask at this stage? I have a question. Um, I've never used a credit card, so why would somebody use a credit card? Okay, so you want to answer? You? That's your background, man. <laughs> so, just now we shared about if you do not pay on time, then there's a big challenge. Credit card, technically, you're taking a credit means you're taking a debt because you are spending today and you only pay when your payment cycle is due. Let's say it's the end of the month, 30th or 31st of the month. So you pay, you buy something on the 1st of the month, you pay on the 30th. Technically, that's a debt, but if you pay on time, there's no fees, there's no, nothing, and that's what we really encourage everybody, please pay on time your credit cards. Your question is then, why do I do this? Just from a Financial tool is convenient. You spend now, you, you consolidate your bills, you pay at the end. That's the basic convenience. But because of many financial institutions like banks trying to encourage, they then put some loyalty points. Singapore, one of the strongest loyalty points before COVID, maybe still now, is Chris Flyer points. Right? The more you charge, the more Chris Flyer, then maybe you can get one free ticket after you spend a certain amount. But as long as you can, sp as long as you can pay on time, and then going back, if I may, to what is our reason for being here, what's our identity and what's our mission, how is the expenditure aligned to that, even though we may get all those points. So what normally people would spend on a card because they spend now, they pay at the end of the month, and because they, are, they get some benefits in terms of points or discounts as a result of spending. Actually, if you think about it, you actually gain because you get free credit. And mm. the period that your money is not uh, being taken by the, you know, the, the bank, you can invest that money. So let's say you earn the 14 days interest last if you are the So actually, you, yes. you take advantage yes. of leveraging your, your cash. Yeah. As long as you think like yeah. I, I won't belabor the point, but there's something else you also need to, to note. If you want to look at what's happening in Singapore, you look at what's happening in the countries like the US and things like that. They depend a lot on what the, the, the tax, the, the credit bureau reports, right? Uh, and a lot of the times now in the US, if you want to get a better rate on your home loan, they look at your credit bureau report, right? We are not there yet, but we will get there. Already in Singapore, you know that uh, the phone companies have their own credit report. Right? We will get there maybe another eight to 10 years, right? likelihood. Right? So build your credit report. But again, if you, are, you have an addictive uh, personality and you cannot control your spending, then don't. Right? So it depends on what your personal circumstances are. We, we have to be smart about it. Lah. Yeah? Yeah. Legal. <laughs> so in most in most banks today, yeah. the the leader is called the head of cards and unsecured loans. Advertisement, uh, yeah. So the head of credit cards and unsecured loans. The short answer is yes. But the the interest rate for credit card and the unsecured loans most of the time is is the same. Yeah. So unsecured loans means you are borrowing money from the bank without a uh, security. So a mortgage. It's a secured loan, where you're borrowing money from the bank, but the, the bank has a security. So credit cards and unsecured loans, from a legal standpoint, has the highest interest rates. Yeah. Yes, that's true. And the way it's explained, right, 
if you don't pay on time, every spend that you do attracts the interest rate. One more data point, not only every spend, incremental spend, every time you take out from the ATM on the credit card, not your ATM card, huh? next card, no problem. <laughs> No advertisement, sorry. But if you take out from your credit card from the ATM, that attracts interest rate. And until you pay that up, every subsequent transaction also attracts interest rate. That's why some people cannot use credit cards because they tend to overspend. They, they, they tend to use things like debit card or nets. I, I help you <laughs> sell Koyo a bit. I, I see. You can. Yeah. And that's the trap, right? Because you use it to consume. I know people who, who use things like that to consume, to go to the club or whatever. They don't have the money to support it. So, because, yeah. but not so long ago, <coughs> this was only available for white goods. You go and buy a fridge, you buy a TV, you can pay over a certain amount of time. Today, even in Singapore, there's this concept called buy now, pay later. So even for small dollar items, $20, $30 items, you can buy now and spread over a period of time. You are not paying any interest as long as you pay it all on time. Of course, going back to if you spend too much and then you lead into the situation of you cannot pay on time and that's where your debt starts accumulating. Yeah, but we do, case, yeah, right? they but normally look at it portfolio. Yeah, la. yeah, I mean, a lot of the companies now spend a lot of time trying to monetize. Yes. So certainly those are the things, but we are, we are a bit short on time. Yes. Uh, do you want to do one more question? If we have, yes. Is it advisable to pay off student loans with credit cards. Can I ask you something? Yes. Your student loan, what interest rate? Mm, no la. I mean, huh? is it advisable? Like, no, no, no. But, so I ask you first. What's the, interest? What's the interest rate on your credit card? On your, on your, your, on your student loan? I mean, I'm not the one that is... Uh, ah. No, but generally student loans are loan at a lower... Exactly. Like lower so so it's thing. dangerous. I, I'm addressing that point because a lot of people say, hey, my friends say... Uh, uh, I should do this. No, so, so we have to ask questions. Does it make sense for you? What is your interest rate? If you're telling me, or oh, the interest rate on my credit card, or my, or my student loans is 30%, then I say, by all means, because it makes sense to do that. But if you're telling me you're paying 2%, then it doesn't make sense. So don't go and listen to what other people say. Do what makes sense for you. Correct? Ask the questions. Don't follow other people. Right? In, okay. Generally, in Singapore, that cannot happen. So legally, you, yeah. you cannot take a loan to pay a loan. Yeah. In Singapore. By right, lah. <laughs> yeah, by right. <laughs> but then, yeah, if it happens, the MAS will, will clamp down on it. Okay. So you want to handle the last one? Or I handle? <laughs> you can talk to it. So take a look at this. Uh. Hey, this is the sell Koyo time. <laughs> no, but seriously, I hope you guys have taken... 45 minutes is not a long time. But we hope that at least you bring back a couple of points, uh, some points to be aware of, right? And, and this one, you know, uh, what, what we are doing, actually, this part of a, uh, the, the give stewardship talks, okay? Uh, Catholic Foundation is actually doing a five-week financial stewardship course called God, Money, and Me, GMM, uh, in January 2022, okay? Uh, so these topics will be covered, uh, will be about stewardship principles, about using uh, our, our faith, you know, uh, the ethics of money and, and, and the guiding principle will be the Bible and the Catholic teachings, in the Catholic uh, catechism, right? Um, so, can you all guess, uh, this five-week course, how much is it going to cost you all? Don't know, huh? it, it, The cost will be covered by Catholic Foundation, so don't worry. You, you guys pay nothing. Yeah, you guys pay nothing. So please, if you're looking into having God, biblical principles guide, guide, your, uh, guide your life, consider joining this, huh? 
just sign up and then go for it. Okay? So we, as you know, in our church, we are, we are more than scripture. Right? Yeah. We, are, we are so rich in tradition. We are so rich in teachings. And we have really tried to encompass all our teachings into this course. Uh, it's a five-week course. Uh, so for yourselves or for people who you think will be interested, uh, please, please share this QR code with them. Now, if you have questions about the course, you can ask the wonderful uh, ladies and gentlemen behind. Uh, they will be able to answer your questions. But do consider attending because it's very powerful. Knowledge is power. Yeah? So with that, thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you very much.